In this video, I'm going to show you the first settings to adjust in Reaper. So this is part two of the first settings to adjust in Reaper. So now let's take a look at our preferences. If we go to the Actions menu, Show Action List, and type into the filter Preferences. And right over here is our Options and Preferences. Double click it, and that opens up our Preferences dialog. And if we choose our project, right over here, when creating new projects, Reaper can use a project file as a template. So if you create one and set it up how you prefer to work, you could browse and choose that project. And every time you create a new project in Reaper, it's going to use that file as a template to start from and continue working with it. And we could also choose the option to prompt to save a new project. So every time you create a new project, it's going to ask us to save it and where to save it to, which is kind of helpful to make sure you save your projects before you start working with them. But this is off by default. Now down over here affects how Reaper backs up our projects. By default, it's going to make a backup file every time we resave our project. So let's go back to our hard drive. And we'll see right here, here's our project file. But if we save this project again and go back to it, Notice, Reaper created a backup file of the first time we saved it. And every time we hit save, it adds the old file to this one. So we always have a backup of anything we saved. And that's by default. But if you want to expand on that and choose to keep multiple versions and then auto save them over here. By default, it already saves our files every 15 minutes. But we could change it to be more often. Sometimes I'll set it to be three or even one minute and set this to only save when stopped. So it's not going to save our Reaper file while recording or playing back, at least not automatically, just while the transport is stopped. Then we could also choose to save the file in a different directory, again, keeping our project folder more organized. So if we choose this and give it a name, I'm going to call it Auto Backups. Then based on the time we set here, which is every minute, Reaper is going to create automatic backups of our projects, just in case we forget to hit save often enough. So if we go back to our hard drive, we can see that Reaper created this folder, Auto Backups. And inside it are the auto backups that Reaper created. Again, these are saved based on how many minutes we set it up, while this file is based on when we actually hit save while well, this one is the newest file we're using. So if we hit save in our project, this is the file that we're using. And it puts an old one over here with an automatic backup in here, based on the time we set up. But again, all this stuff down here is not on by default, but feel free to change it based on the way you prefer to work. And right over here are the track send defaults. By default, when we create a new track, let's create one. Reaper puts the volume of that track at zero dB. If you want to work with more headroom and start a bit lower, we could change it to any value we want. So if we set it to minus six, apply it, and create a new track, it starts off at minus six. So all our tracks will start off a bit lower than zero dB based on what we set up over here. But the default is zero. Now down over here, we could choose to put our track into record when we create it. So if we choose this and apply it, let's create a new track, and it starts out in record. This is really useful if you're recording a lot of MIDI and you want to start recording right away. So when we create new tracks, they're already in record. But this is off by default, but we could turn it on right here if you want it. And we could also set up a record configuration for new tracks. So by default, monitoring input is on. So we're going to hear our audio or our MIDI through our track. But if you're using an interface with zero latency and you're monitoring through that software, 
you might want to turn this off. And then when you create new tracks, they start off with monitoring off. You can still change it later, but the default is what we set up in here. Turn it on, turn on tape auto style, or turn it off. But the default is monitor input. So we're going to hear our audio or MIDI through our track. We could also change the recording modes, record the input, or MIDI overdub replace, or set up the input in advance. If you tend to use input one, two, three, or four, you just choose it right here. And by default, every new track you create is going to start off with that input, which is also useful for MIDI. I could set it up with my USB MIDI keyboard, apply it, and then every new track I create starts out in record with my USB MIDI keyboard set up as the input. Now there's one other option I want to show you under the record configuration. If we go down here to the bottom, by default, we could automatically record arm our tracks when selected. So if we choose this and apply it, and again, create a new track, by default, it's in record, and the record button has an A in it, meaning when this track is selected, the track will be in record. When it's not selected, it comes out of record, which is really helpful for dealing with multiple MIDI tracks at a time. Of course, it'll also work with audio tracks. Let's say I create another, it automatically goes into record, and instead of having to take this track out of record each time, I could just select this track, and this track is in record, and this track comes out of record. So I could select this track for doing our piano or strings, and go back to this one and work on bass, and any track we select at the time is going to automatically go into record, while taking the other ones out of record. But by default, this option is off. So if you want that behavior on every track you create, just turn it on down here. So because this topic is pretty long, I've cut it into three parts. Check out part three next. Bingo, boys, let's go. Mm -hmm.